Denise Gordon, and I'm board president of Seaglass Theatre Company. Today, I am proud to introduce Jennifer Jaroslavsky, a soprano who will be singing in our program, Lure of the Sea. You've got Absolutely. a lot going in your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> it's been most of my life. Well, let's go back to the original hat. Where did you grow up? And, and how did, what was your first experience with music? Oh, so it's a complicated story, but I grew up in Boca Raton, Florida. But the first seven years of my life, I lived in Buenos Aires, Argentina. So I was born in the U.S. and then we went back. But um, most of my, a good chunk of my childhood was, was in Buenos Aires. And my first introduction to music was as a ballet dancer. Uh, it's a very typical Latina thing to <laughs> start dancing ballet when you're three years old. You're in, you're in the room. So... Uh, I danced ballet from three years old until I was 18 uh, and a lot of other kinds of music as well. But that was my first introduction to classical music. And my parents have videos of me dancing in the living room to, and they would play opera for my little practices and my little shows I would put on in the, in the living room for everyone. And so I, they have videos of me dancing to Kalas, singing Omio Babino Caro and all of that. So <laughs> Pretty early on, but just as a dancer at first. What what a great beginning! How did you? How, what what inspired the voice part? When did that all start to come out? You know, it's like they say in Mamma Mia. It's like I was singing before I could talk, and my parents kind of tracked that throughout my life. My mom is my my biggest supporter, and she. Um, when we got to the U.S., I was in choir at school. And my choir teacher, my middle school choir, or elementary and middle school choir teacher, she uh, would give me solos and recognize a little bit of a talent there. And I started doing a lot of musical theater, uh, just some uh, little theater companies in the area, some local theater companies in the area in, in Boca Raton in South Florida. And so that's how it started. I started through theater, as many of us do. I loved musical theater. I participated in all of the productions in middle school. And then I got to high school and I found um, this incredible voice teacher. We had solo and ensemble competitions. Those were our mm -hmm. classical music competitions in South Florida. And one of my judges was soon to be my, my voice teacher who started it all for me in opera. Her name is Marie Ashley. And she was the one who recognized, I was singing classical music by that time, just with just, you know, the uh, Italian songs, just small, small little ditties. And she recognized that I could potentially do this professionally. And she had me join the, she had me apply to join the Palm Beach Opera high school program. So that's how it started. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Wonderful. And you and you ended up in Boston to study. Is that right? I did. Yes. Yes. I was choosing between Boston and New York, but I went with Boston University because they allowed for me to study, to pursue a dual degree in four years. So I did two degrees at the same time <laughs> in four years. And uh, I studied political science and voice in my undergraduate there. So that was the big decision. And of course, Boston, in my opinion, the best city. <laughs> it is. I love Boston. So it is. I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to not only grow in my education, but as a, an individual as well, really like grow into myself as a person. That's wonderful. Well, maybe you'll be one of our first singing House of Representative members. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use I always thought growing up the singing lawyer. Singing lawyer was the title everyone was going for. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, that's yeah. great. Well, we're, we're, we're thrilled you pursued the music more than the political science. Yes. You know, it, 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 it is what it is. Now, tell me, have you, have you traveled around a lot to sing? Have you sung in interesting places? I have. I've had a, a great luck of singing in some really interesting places. Um, you know, we all do summer programs going through our undergraduates, I had the luck of going to Italy. So I sang in a small town called Viterbo, um, a little town north of Rome up in the mountains. And it was beautiful. And that was my first role ever. I sang Papagena in the Magic Flutes <laughs> and had the most amazing time with my then teacher uh, at that program. So that was my first international debut. And recently I went to Beersheba in Israel, and uh, I'm also Jewish, and so that was a really, really big moment for me to be able to perform in Israel and professionally sing there and have my debut. I sang Don Anna in, in Don Giovanni there. It was unbelievable, unbelievable, such a beautiful experience. Was your family able to join you there, or was it a solo? It was a solo trip. Yes, it was a solo trip. I do have one cousin of my grandmother. So a lot of Argentinians eventually, a lot of Jewish Argentinians eventually end up in Israel um, somehow. And so one of my grandmother's cousins uh, came to see the show. So that was really special because I don't know that I had met her uh, previously to that. So it was really beautiful. Oh, that's moment. great. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful.
non-classical artist or group or type of music? Who do you like to listen to? Yeah. Well, um, growing up, I basically only listened to Barbara Streisand or Whitney Houston. So (laughs) they are to blame. It's all because of my mother. That's who she, you know, exposed me to. But then my dad also loves music big, big music person. So most of my music education and outside of classical music is from my father. And that's what I like to listen to today. Um, All of the classic rock. We love Queen, Elton John, The Beatles, Foreigner. And he would always burn CDs for us to take in the car with him. And, And I still, you know, love listening to that music today. I have a playlist on Spotify called Nostalgia. And that's basically what I listen to. Tell me what you do in your downtime. What do you do for fun? What's downtime? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't understand the question. <laughs> um, I love hanging out with my friends. I have a lot of luck in my friendships. I have some really wonderful people that I get to call my teammates in life. And so I spend most of my time just trying to catch up with them if I'm not working during the day or singing. I also um, love to be outside. I love to work out outside, especially now with the pandemic, I got into that. Um, I was in Florida for most of it with my parents and my mom is a big exercise junkie. So she got me out there with her walking around the neighborhood and you know, getting as much fresh air as possible. So I love being outside and I love traveling. If I, you know, that I think those two go hand in hand, thank God, opera and and traveling. So I try to go somewhere outside of the U.S. every year. Unfortunately, we had an Austria-Switzerland trip planned and it got canceled. (laughs) I was very very sad. I was so excited to go to Wiener Staatsoper, but it didn't happen. But hopefully in the future. So, yes, my downtime is spent not really doing anything down, but (laughs) just taking advantage of of the time to do, to spend time with people I love and to see, see new places and open my mind as much as possible. Well, that's the way to live. Yes. Agreed. Really, really really is. So I've got a couple of fun, I hope fun questions. Yes. What's your weirdest gig? What's been your weirdest gig? My weirdest gig, I, you know, I think I've had a lot of luck. I haven't really had a weird gig, I would say. I did once get in a kind of uh, opera karaoke battle with a gondolier in in Venice. (laughs) Okay, that counts. It wasn't a paid gig, but (laughs) my, my parents were, you know, very happy to show support and be the audience. Now that, but I haven't really done anything strange. I've had a lot of fun opportunities that, have allowed for me to meld my two art forms of dance and opera. I've worked with this incredible director, uh, Lauren Meeker, and she puts a lot of dance into her operas. And so that has been a really a particularly um, exciting opportunity for me. I've done it twice officially, and she really puts dance into all of her operas. (laughs) Oh, that's wonderful. It's like singing upside down on a ramp or running around. I, we did Cunning Little Vixen uh, at Boston University my last year there. And, and it's not weird at all. So fun. So yeah. very fun. Fully choreographed production uh, with Felicity Stevenson um, was the choreographer and fully choreographed 90 minute long opera production. So that that's my most weird <laughs> story, but very, Again, very fun. You focus on the fun. I love it. Yes. Yes, I you always it. have to find find the fun in it.
about your work with the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation, because those four words together really make me excited. So tell yes. me what, that, what is that all about? Yes, you should be excited. Some really exciting things coming to the forefront at the moment. So the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation was founded by Leonard and Ronald Lauder of Estee Lauder. And um, my boss, <laughs> whose name is Howard Phillips, he's the chief science officer and founding executive director. And so I'm his executive assistant on the team. And the ADDF for short, um, their main mission is to rapidly accelerate the discovery of drugs um, to prevent, treat, and cure Alzheimer's and really focus on, it focuses on Alzheimer's disease as well as other neurodegenerative diseases. Um, and it's really the only charity that solely focuses on finding drugs for Alzheimer's disease. So it's really important work. Um, you know, I, we uh, singers usually call it a side hustle. It's not a side hustle for me. It's very much um, a passion. And Alzheimer's unfortunately plagues a lot of people uh, all around the world. And ADDF is a global um, nonprofit and, and supports research of a variety of uh, laboratories, universities, and other research uh, organizations that are, are looking for drug development in this field. Um, the recent, there was a recent FDA approval of a drug called Adahelm by Biogen in Massachusetts. <laughs> um, and that was a, a major, major uh, milestone that was accomplished by the Alzheimer's community. So my work is basically to support our brilliant scientists uh, all PhDs I work with, and they're fantastic. And I have the opportunity to learn so much from them and really feel that on my day to day outside of the music, which music we know makes a huge global impact, that also in my other field, I'm also making having the opportunity to even in my role of supporting the science team, they're the ones doing the research, but even in my role, I feel like I ha I'm having a really strong impact on the, the global community. And, and it's really, really meaningful to me. Oh, that's wonderful. And don't, don't we read and don't we feel that music is so helpful for people with that kind of a challenge? Because it, it somehow, somehow connects your memory to your heart, to your life, to your uh, music just seems to transcend yes. it all. Absolutely. It's definitely a trigger. I won't pretend to know the science of it, but my boss, my boss has spoken about how his um, family members who have had Alzheimer's um, and battled Alzheimer's would have moments of levity and lightness whenever they would play their favorite songs. And I have had the pleasure of working with Alzheimer's patients throughout my life um, as a volunteer. And it is absolutely true the power of music transcends and it's it's amazing that these two fields are you know correlated in that way and and we can really I, are the addf support i mean the louder family very much supports the arts um so it's really such such an honor to to work for such an incredible foundation and really be able to meld those two passions together good for you i mean it's <laughs> It clearly lights it, lights, lights you up when you talk about it. So oh, thank you. <laughs> it's wonderful. That's, it's so important to do something that you love. And you're doing something you love on both sides or the complete yes. part of who you are. It's wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Never a dull moment, but we <laughs> love it. We're always happy. We're all, I'm, I, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. It really is to, to fill my life in this way. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Lure of the Sea. I, I know that it's a... It's a wonderful series of music that that Patrice and, and Matthew have put together. And tell me a little bit how about how it makes you feel and how the Latinx connection, you know, the, the whole program. Give me a little feel for it. First of all, I mean, there are a few people that know my voice as well as Matthew Larson. I will <laughs> say that. Um, I have known Matthew since my freshman year at Boston University, which I won't say when that is, so I won't date myself. And um, I knew that joining on, it would be it would be just an incredible experience. And he has this ear for repertoire that is not very easily matched. And 
it is proven by the, cho the choices he has made here. Um, I'm so excited to be performing Marina. This is an opera. It's originally a tarzuela that was made into an opera, a uh, three-act opera. And I'm so excited. I've been eyeing it for a long time. And of course, Matthew is the one to bring it into fruition. And it's truly, truly beautiful music. It's exactly what you would imagine for Spanish music to sound like. But it has that bel canto um, mm. edge to it. And it's so beautiful. I mean, it's so very easy to sing and to admire. But the ear, it's, it's, it's a true pleasure to sing. And for me to be able to sing in Spanish is my absolute favorite thing. I always, if I do a recital, I always program Spanish on my recital. One of the art songs I'll be singing that Matthew helped me choose, um, I sang on my master's recital and my grandparents were in the room. My grandparents speak very little English, so it was wonderful for them to be able to experience it. And I'm excited to share it with the Sea Glass audience as well. It's so important to be able to feature this diversity for Sea Glass and, and for the opera world at large. So thank you so much for asking me to be a part and I can't wait to perform. Thank you. 